Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the webinar. Today, we're joined by Marty Meyer from El Toro to talk about what the heck digital IP targeting even is. So I'm going to start with a little bit of housekeeping, just like we usually do. Your phones will be muted throughout the webinar, but if you have a question, you can type it into the question box, and we will have a short Q&A at the end of the presentation. If you don't already know, my name is Jess Larkin, and I am the Marketing and Communication Specialist at Cornerstone. My information is right there on the screen if you'd like to get in contact with me. Also, you should give us a follow on social media. We post industry and Cornerstone updates and information. So go to Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, or YouTube to give us a follow. Earn cash with Cornerstone's 2021 Agent Incentive Program. The program rewards you for your new group and individual sales. The top 20 qualifiers are going to receive cash prizes up to $5,000, plus one lucky qualifier is going to win a weekend getaway, which sounds pretty good right now. You can register online at www.crnstone.com. Autopilot is a compensation-based client referral program that offers the services of licensed representatives to, quote, enroll and support and provide year-round service to your clients that may fall out of your business scope but never off your radar. Our talented team will take care of your client's health insurance needs for individual and family coverage, employee benefits, or Medicare solutions. So you can activate Autopilot today on the Cornerstone website. All right, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with talking about digital IP targeting. So I'm gonna pass it off to Marty Meyer from El Toro. Jessica, thank you very much. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, good morning. I hope um, everyone's having a good day. Uh, you know, I, what, what is this day 3,500 in the bunker? Um, who would have thought a year ago or, you know, six months ago that the world would get shut down? Just a crazy time. Um, what I wanted to do is discuss El Toro IP targeting, kind of give you an overview of what we do. Uh, we actually have a very new, exciting product as well that deals with COVID. Uh, with the onset of the pandemic and the lockdown, we've actually seen a huge increase in digital advertising across the country, um, uh, across many verticals. And I know that you all may be familiar with uh, digital advertising, uh, but I wanted to introduce you to El Toro IP targeting. Uh, everything about digital advertising has been around for about 27 years, and it's all related to using cookies for uh, targeting, uh, you know, identification of targets, uh, bidding and delivery of uh, ad impressions. El Toro started about seven years ago. Uh, we have been very blessed as a company. Uh, we have grown from uh, seven employees to about 150, and we were actually named the uh, year before last by Deloitte as the 13th fastest growing technology company in North America. So I guess we're doing something right. And what we've done is we've created the world's only 100% cookie-free digital platform. And what I mean by that, instead of using cookies, which is online behavior uh, that, that you know, it's captured by those cookies, we've learned how to map the IP address of the router down to a specific physical address. So we've literally gridded the entire United States down to square meter increments. We've assigned a latitude longitude down to that square meter. We overlay parcel level data, which obviously gives us the address as well. And then we look at tremendous amounts of data. Uh, we're ingesting up to 5 million digital records per second into our system seven days a week. That data tells us with a very high degree of confidence where an IP address is down to that square meter. Uh, we have then developed processes that allow us to bid on ad inventory on an IP level. So I'm not sure how much you know about how digital ads are delivered, but when you go to a web page, like if you type in, you know, ESPN.com, hit enter, there's like a big auction. And during that auction time, uh, as that page is loading on your screen, everyone else is matching you back to a cookie and an ad call. And if they get a match, they bid. They win that auction in theory when that page loads, the ad is in front of you. Uh, so, so during that ad call, what everyone else is doing is matching you back to cookies. Uh, you know, they get that match. Uh, and in theory, if they win that auction, that, that impression will be in front of you. And that takes roughly 50 to 70 milliseconds, and it's a complete cookie transaction. Uh, the identification, the bidding, the delivery is using cookies. 
El Toro has actually de you know, developed a process that allows us to, when the ad call goes out, we just see the IP address. So we don't have to go through all this cookie data, you know, this online behavior, ho hopefully you know, targeting one of the people that you want to target. We just bid on the IP address. So we actually had to develop our own bidding platform that gave us that technical ability. What it, what's taken everybody else 50 to 70 milliseconds, we're actually able to accomplish that same function within two to seven milliseconds. And what that means is we're going to win those auctions. And it also allows us to cherry pick better ad traffic. Uh, we're averaging about 85% above the fold on our inventory, uh, meaning when the page loads, you see the ad without any scrolling. Okay. And that's a pretty good number in the uh, digital world. Probably the two number one reasons for our success and growth is in the digital world, unfortunately, the majority of those ad calls that are triggering those auctions are not actually coming from real people. They're coming from all these web bots out there that are capturing data. Uh, you know, when a Google bot goes out and captures a story on, you know, CNN that they're going to, that, that you, that gives you the ability to search for it in a Google search, it triggers an ad call. Uh, if there are adding, you know, impressions on that page, they will load and someone will get a bill for that, even though a person will never see it. It's estimated that over 80% of the daily ad calls are non-human. So it's a huge problem. Since our only catalyst is to bid on an IP address that we literally map to a square meter inside of an address that you told me to serve to, I can't bid on bots because you're not going to give me data centers addresses, I would imagine. So I'll be giving you nearly 100% human traffic. The other reason for our success is we can prove it, uh, what we do. So when if you were to give me an address list, uh, you know, a spreadsheet, uh, I'm going to typically match between 65 to 75% of your list. Uh, any other company like Google AdWords or, you know, Simcast or LiveRamp or all these other competitors of ours, if you give them a list of addresses, they'll come back and tell you, a, you know, a match rate, a percentage, but that's all they give you. El Toro will actually give you that list back, that spreadsheet. We'll add a new column with the true or false in front of each record. So not only will we tell you how many we match, we would disclose to you each individual address that we can target and serve ads to and which ones we can't. Uh, and that's something that's unique to El Toro. So not only do we tell you how many clicks you get, you know, which what is what everyone else does in a digital campaign, we can actually do a matchback analysis of actual conversions. So Post campaign, if you can send me a list of addresses of people that you consider a conversion, you know, someone that bought an insurance plan, somebody bought a product of some sort, we can then do a matchback analysis and show you empirically how well that targeted group that got ads performed against that control group that didn't get ads. Um, I'll give you a good example. Uh, I do a lot of work, and this is not in the insurance world, but I do a lot of work with uh, Renewal by Anderson, the big window company. Uh, they've always relied heavily on direct mail, and I'm sure you've gotten direct mail pieces from window uh, 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 companies. So we'll take their mail list, we'll match that 60, 70%. We'll schedule a digital campaign to begin approximately seven days before the mail piece is in the home. We go seven days afterwards, uh, deliver about an ad a day over that two week period. Post campaign, they give us a list of everybody who, in this case, scheduled an appointment with the sales rep in the home. That's what they're considering a conversion. We do our matchback analysis and what we're consistently showing with Anderson after over about five years of serving them is that the people that are getting two weeks of IP ads and a mail piece are, uh, are, are, are the ones that are providing about 75 to 85% of all of those conversions compared to that control group of people who are just getting a one-time mail piece. So whether they click on an ad or not, it's really not important. We can still measure and prove exactly what we're doing. And, you know, we can't lie about that because we're giving that match list pre-campaign and this is your conversion data post-campaign. So that's probably the number one reason that is you know, kind of, you know, we've been vaulted into this, uh, you know, the success uh, and have grown so fast. Um, so that's kind of our core technology, that one-to-one -one targeting where you would provide these addresses. Uh, we've got a few other things I'll roll through really quick. Um, 
Secondly, we have got a, uh, an ability that we can map the IP addresses for a key location. So instead of, uh, if you don't have an address, but you want to target like a college campus or a convention center or trade show or a, uh, a business, we've got a mapping technology in our system. So instead of you giving me a list of addresses that I mapped, I can go into my, uh, you know, my online portal and going into a, a, a mapping interface, I can zoom down to any location nationwide, take my mouse and draw a polygon around any location. Like I said, it could be a college campus, a business, et cetera. And once I close that polygon, what it will do is pull from my system all of the IP addresses I currently have mapped down to square meters inside that location. So now when I serve ads to that location, it's going through the Wi-Fi there. Uh, and if, you know, like I'll, I'll give you an example with the trade show, you could, you know, uh, put in a message that would have the name of the company of that trade show. And it would be, um, you know, uh, you know, like if I'm, I, I, I'll give you, uh, you know, like Acme Incorporated welcomes you to the 2020, you know, insurance symposium, come by booth A. Uh, if we're targeting an actual business, we can mention that name of the business there. So I do a lot of uh, automotive work and I'm based in Louisville, Kentucky. And in that um, location, um, it, it, we have Humana Incorporated is, is uh, one of the corporate partners here in uh, Louisville and they're eligible for a special buying plan through Ford. So when we are having that Memorial Day sale, or that 4th of July day sale, my message is uh, Humana employees are eligible for Ford's X plan at Bill Collins Ford. Click here for details. So it's a very granular message in that aspect. So that's the second product, guys. Um, third product I wanted to talk about is something that we call captive audience, or I'm sorry, digital uh, or venue replay. Um, I'm stumbling on these words today, sorry. Uh, so Venue Replay is sort of like a little time machine. Uh, we are able to capture um, device IDs at locations that have already happened, okay? So if you've ever, you know, tried to capture device IDs to, to follow people home on their mobile devices, uh, it, it's a form of geofencing, which is typically where they'll triangulate a cell tire signal uh, between a uh, cell tires uh, around the community. So what we've done is we've discovered that we can capture device IDs inside ad exchanges when ad calls are happening. If you remember that auction we discussed earlier. So in the uh, so for this product to work, your location services have to be enabled on your phone, which is about 93% of all, uh, all cell phones in America. And then while you're on your phone, there has to be an ad call. You can't just be walking around with your phone or making a phone call. But if you were to say, click the weather app on your phone, which most people have, there'll be a banner ad when that app loads, right? And when that ad call happened for that auction, El Toro sees that in their system. And what we capture from that ad call is a timestamp of when that occurred, the device ID, which is unique to your phone, and the latitude and longitude of where your phone is at down to a square meter. We collect that data 24 seven across all 50 states. So back in my portal, I have that same Google map interface or you know mapping tool. So I can zoom down to any location, draw a polygon around that location. I can then put in a date and time range of a specific event, or I can put a date range going back any time over the past six months. It will dedupe itself as well, but what I'll have is a list of devices that were active at that very location, but only during those times or dates that you specified. Once I have that device ID, I can do two things. I can bid on mobile ad traffic on a device ID level, and now I can put a little banner ad on your iPhone, okay? Uh, more importantly, once I've got your device ID, and, and this is a little bit creepy, I got to warn you, I can map it back to your house because I'm probably capturing each of your all's devices right now at the, at the same location, you know, four or five, six, seven days a week, week after week between 9 p.m. and 9 a.m. 
So now determine where your device resides. And once I know where that device resides, I can see the IP address at that location. So now when you're back home at your laptop or desktop, I can start serving ads on your computer, which work better than those little bitty banner ads on your iPhone, okay? So I'll give you an example. I do a lot of work in the, uh, for a pharmaceutical company. So they just want to target doctors. So they'll give me a list of, you know, a medical convention, symposiums around the country. So I'll go back in after that, uh, that convention is ended. I'll polygon that resort or that conference center. Uh, I'll put in the, just the dates and times of that conference and I'll capture those devices that were active. Now these doctors have flown home all over the country. So yeah, I'm, I'm probably hitting them once a day on their phone, but more importantly, I'm just hitting their houses 10 or 15 times a week, but only after 6 p.m. I'm only competing with, you know, possibly a spouse or a child or two to stay in front of that, you know, that doctor, right? If I was trying to hit a doctor at any decent sized hospital, there could be, you know, 10, 15, 20,000 people there a day. So the chances of hitting that doctor are pretty slim. But this way, I know I'm hitting just doctors in their houses. So that's a pretty good um, uh, roundup of, of, of most of my products in technology. Uh, I will send out to Jess some collateral after this call that she can share with the attendees that have, yeah. you know, more information and the, um, uh, you know, and a couple other products as well that I won't go over, but I did want to go over one new product that we've just developed uh, that may be very exciting to some of you all because it's extremely pertinent for the times that we're in. So with El Toro, everyone knows us as a digital IP targeting solution, okay? We're delivering digital ads, right? But what we've done is developed a COVID contract or contact tracing technology. So right now the world's trying to go back to work or school and they're trying to find out a way to do that uh, smart, right? Even a lot of the, you know, a lot of companies have developed their own protocols. Like it may just require you to, uh, uh, you know, when you go to the office to take your temperature or maybe, you know, fill out a spreadsheet or do an email stating that you're healthy today, right? So the issue with COVID is if you test positive for COVID, you will be contacted by your local health department and they will initiate a tracing program. And basically they're going to ask you where you've been and who you've been in contact with the last two weeks. And then they're going to try to contact those people to you know, ask them to self quarantine and or get tested to stop the spread of COVID, right? And that's a very uh, clunky system. And by the time they get around to finding all those people, you know, the, the, the damage has been done basically. Um, so I, as a matter of fact, I've got a, a, a very good friend uh, and she tested positive and it took two weeks before the uh, health department contacted her, what, what, you know, because of that. So what El Toro has done, because we know how to track devices, okay, that's, that's just part of our, you know, our, our technology. And what we did is we partnered with another company called ReadyApp. And they are an app company that had a great platform already produced. And we literally turned this product around in about four weeks, which, you know, in the R&D world, that's like, you know, rocket speed. So we came up with a product that we call Healthy Passport. And Healthy Passport does all of the three things you need to do for uh, you know, smart tracking, okay? A, it tracks devices. B, it has a, uh, a daily healthy health assessment. And C, it has a notification system. So with our clients, we would, you know, contract with a school or a company or a government entity. And once we are contracted with them and have them set up in our system, they would email out to all of their employees uh, a link to download an app, which can be downloaded in all three major uh, app stores. And once you log into this app and set it up, what it's, we would also polyframe or polygon the location of that work environment, that company headquarters, that college campus, that, that elementary school, that, you know, that processing plant, whatever that may be. 
and we're only going to track your phone while you're inside that location at work or school. We are not going to track you out in the wild, okay, when you leave the office. But what we'll do, because we're using GPS to track, all of the competitors out there are using uh, Bluetooth technology, which is just not a very uh, targeted means of tracking devices. So with GPS, we can see where you're at at that company down to a square meter. We also, with, uh, G, you know, with most modern cell phones, uh, you have a built-in altimeter in your phone. So not only can we tell where you're at down to a square meter, we can tell if you're on the second floor or the 15th floor. Uh, so we track those devices 24 seven at just those locations, okay? The second piece of Healthy Passport is before you go to work or when you get to work, whatever that, that company's protocol would be, you would open up the app and there, there will be about six or seven questions. And each question is a, we're asking if you've got this symptom of COVID. Do you have a sore throat? Do you have you lost the sense of taste or smell? Do you have a temperature? And you will put your temperature in as well. And if you answer, you know, no to all of those, you'll get a healthy passport or a green passport and you're, you're, you're ready to go on your merry way to work. But if you answer, let's say I have got a, a cough, right? That doesn't mean you've got COVID, but it is a symptom. So you're going to get a yellow passport and you may get a message later in the day that asks you to, you know, just ask you how are you feeling now in case you start, you know, going downhill uh, or, or developing, you know, a, you know a, a deeper illness. And then if you were to test positive for a COVID and you uploaded that you have tested positive or you are, you know, or your spouse or, or a family member has tested positive, you'll get a red passport and it's customized for the message of that company but it will give you information on what you should do primarily don't go to work uh, but more importantly every single device that had been within three meters of you over the past 14 days will get an alert through the app stating that they have been in contact with somebody that has tested positive and that they should self-quarantine and get tested and any other message that that company wants to send to you, okay? Now, it's not gonna let you know who tested positive and this product is very secure from a privacy standpoint and it's HIPAA compliant, but it does everything you need to go back to work safely. Uh, we have actually uh, contracted with a large number of companies in the last five weeks that we've had this on the market. Uh, that includes several state governments, several county and city governments. Uh, we are possibly um, doing, we're actually in conversations with a branch of the military right now, uh, several guard units. Uh, we have contracted with about a dozen colleges one very large school system and we're talking to several other smaller ones and we actually just closed a deal with the third largest poultry provider in, in america so this is a very pertinent product that helps people go back to work safely so when somebody tests positive you don't have to shut down the entire company you can just uh you know uh, alleviate the you know the people that are uh, you know that are sick as a matter of fact, I had a call with someone the other day, and I can't tell you who this is, but it's a very large insurance provider. Uh, it's one of the ones you see the commercials on all the time on the TV, and they've got a call center in the Midwest that someone tested positive. Since they didn't have any protocols in place, they had to shut down the entire facility, have it uh, professionally, uh, you know, um, uh, cleans and then after a two-week period they start allowing people to go back to work after a quarantine so so guys that's kind of what i've got i, I know if you were thinking about i was just going to talk about digital marketing uh, through, through a curveball there but i'm uh, happy to answer any questions uh, anybody will have and like i said i'll send some information to jess to pass on to you all as well yeah, that would be great. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can type them into the question box. Um, so I, I do have a couple questions here for you, Marty. Um, my first question is, for any of the technology that El Toro provides, what do you think would be the minimum budget that is necessary to have a successful campaign? Um, so our, 
our required minimums are not that high, okay? Uh, so it's very affordable for, you know, smaller companies, you know, up to larger companies to use. But when we think of, you know, successful campaigns, we want to make sure that we're delivering the proper amount of ad impressions to each, you know, location. So, you know, if I just deliver one ad to a location, uh, that's not enough. These are digital ads. You'll want to see that repetition. We kind of recommend about 10 ads a week to a household. Uh, and if it's a business, we just need to know the size of that business to, you know, to let you know what we would recommend. You know, if it's a company like Humana, where there's 9,000 employees in five buildings, that's going to take a lot more ads than if it was a company that had, you know, two dozen people in it, right? Uh, so it would really depend on the locate, you know, on what that looks like. So like at a house, if I'm going to deliver, you know, 10 ads a week for two weeks, um, I could probably do that for about 40 cents per household. And if you think about just one postcard, you're going to spend about that amount, right? For one touch that one person, whoever gets out of the mailbox is basically going to see. Okay, great. Um, my second question um, is, are there types of ads that do better than others using this technology? So I know that you can have different sizes of the ads that you send out. Are there any um, specific sizes um, that do better than others or any kind of content that does better than others? Yeah, so great question. So we can deliver uh, banner ads and we can deliver digital ads. So if you've ever seen those like little 15 or 30 second commercials when you're online, we can do those as well. Uh, I'm gonna strongly recommend that people use uh, dynamic ads, uh, banner ads. So, you know, where you see movement, like the words change or, or there's animation of some sort, uh, there's no difference in price for us, but what that does, that movement, they call it the glimmer effect. You're going to see that and it's gonna draw your eye. If it's just a static ad, you know, it's, it's not necessarily going to draw your eye to see that while you're looking at the content online that you actually are there for, right? Um, you want to have a strong call to action. You know, is there something that gets my attention? Like, you know, free quotes, uh, free, you know, insurance analysis or whatever that may be, just some type of call for action, right? Uh, or if you're giving something, you know, free, you know, thermos with, a, you know, when you, when you come into the office or something. Um, a really good um, uh, resource for you, there is a website called Moat, and that's M-O-A-T, like a castle moat. And if you go to moat.com, there is a search bar. And if you type in a company name, it will populate with banner ads that company has used in the past. And if you scroll over the ad or click on the ad, it will tell you the size of the ad and when it's served. And that's the most important, when it's served. So you can see if it's something that's current or something that served two years ago. But it's a great way to see what other people have done in the industry. Uh, you have to have a decent online presence to get onto Moat. So like a, you know, a neighborhood uh, you know, independent agent probably won't get on there but the corporate office of that company uh, would be there. So like if I put Ford or Humana and there will be, you know, hundreds or thousands of ads. Uh, but if I put, you know, John Smith, independent, you know, uh, agent, it's, it, you know, that's not gonna get, going to get there. But like I said, it's a great free right, resource. As far as the um, size of the ads and everything as well, um, do you recommend sticking with the same um, content throughout all of the ads that you try out, or do you suggest um, switching it up? Um, so like instead of doing all about your insur insurance agency, maybe talking about the things that you can help with, just kind of switching up the content, or would you recommend just sticking with one um, topic? Well, I, that, that actually is a great question, and I like, um, the thing about El Toro, when we work with a client, we like to make sure we're doing smart campaigns. If you come to us with an idea that you want to do, and we do not think it is a viable campaign, we will talk you out of it. I do not want to just charge you for serving ads, right? You can go to Google AdWords and do that, Okay. Uh, because we can prove by measurement of conversions how well your campaigns are working. 
and on the flip side, how well they're not working, okay? But we know this. A lot of times with digital, you don't know what's working. You, you know, there's an old uh, joke that says, I know that 50% of my digital budget's working. I'm just not sure which 50%. Well, with us, we know if it's working or not, right? So we love to test. And that may be with messaging, with the amount of impressions, the type of targeting, the length of the campaign. So we can set up small tests and see what's working. And then we can scale that. And if things aren't working, we can stop that. But with the, with the ads, we can actually run multiple ad sets at the same time. So if you give me a couple of different ad sizes, but each one has a different message, like let, let's just pretend you're selling a, some type of widget for $10, right? So you could give me one ad set that said buy one, get one free, another ad set that said 50% off, and a third ad set that said $5 off, right? So I'll just round robin back and forth amongst those three different messages over the length of your campaign. And then during the campaign and after the campaign, of course, I can pull creative reports and we can see, you know, how many serves, how many clicks, what your click through rate is on each of those individual ad sizes and messages. So we can tell which ones are working, which ones are not. So, you know, obviously you may want to spend 10 bucks and get two of these widgets, but you know, let's be honest, guys, this is America. Math is not our strongest suit for a lot of our population. So they're going to take $5 off 10 any day over 50% off 10. So we know we can pull that ad. So that's just a great way to test and make your campaigns better. You know, your first campaign, hopefully we've done enough research and giving you the advice and, you know, the, the right creators are developed to be successful. But, you know, I'm sure it won't be as successful as your fifth or 10th campaign because we're gonna learn from that data as we're moving forward. We did get a question about how our health insurance agents are able to incorporate this technology into their lead marketing program. Um, and of course, it's important to have a website if you're going to be doing something with El Toro, correct? Yeah, you have to have some type of landing page. And that can be uh, you know, a, a, a specific web page, or it could actually be a Facebook page as well if you don't have a web page. And uh, we had a presentation a couple months ago as well that talks about needing multiple touch points um, in order to reach your audience. So um, my recommendation also when you're incorporating something like this into your lead marketing programs is to um, not stop the other marketing that you might be doing on social media or anything. Um, this is just a good boost to uh, see people or to um, get in contact with people um, by location. Uh, but if you are doing a lead marketing campaign, then um, I would pair it with something else like a website or um, any other marketing collateral that you can, just because it takes uh, multiple touch points to reach somebody. Yeah, we we, we love it. When, like, we do a lot of work with direct mail. Uh, as a matter of fact, some of our partners, so, so El Toro, I will tell you, the majority of our work actually comes through third parties uh, like marketing agencies, PR firms, political consulting groups, uh, that type of thing. Uh, and actually male firms are our partners. And in most of these organizations, we sell our technology. So, you know, just like if you go to a marketing agency, they may, you know, design your logos, do your mail, produce your radio ads, and do your digital and your Facebook social media campaigns. We're just another tool that these agencies use. You're fortunately talking directly to the provider. So there is a, you know, there is a cost savings by working with us direct. Uh, but we do truly love to do, you know, uh, kind of a multi, uh, you know, faceted approach. Uh, we do a lot of work in the direct mail industry. I kind of gave you that example with Anderson, but we work with some very large and actually smaller uh, mail houses. And they offer this, you know, in conjunction with the direct mail campaign. Because, you know, when you send a direct mail piece out, honestly, the majority of those mail pieces are going to only be seen by whoever gets them out of the mailbox, right? And now with us, we can target that household, you know, 10 times a week, 20 times, you know, over two weeks or whatever that may look like. And those are those multiple touches that are going to be seen by that household uh, over the course of that campaign. And we obviously, you know, normally see higher conversion rates because of that. 
All right, it looks like that's all the questions that we have today. If you guys have any additional questions, please feel free to contact me at jlarkin at crnstone.com, and I can forward any of your questions to Marty. Um, and don't forget to register for our other upcoming webinars in this series and in others. So coming up next um, on Tuesday, we have a Tech Tuesday webinar where Cornerstone's tech expert, Tom Levine, will be answering your most frequently asked questions about tech. And then on Wednesday, Jeff Beglin from the Individual Corner will be joined by United Healthcare. You can register for those webinars and any other webinars in this series and in others on the Cornerstone website. And thank you all for joining us today. You will receive a copy of this presentation in the next day or two, and it will be available on the Resource Center at www.crnstone.com. And if you have a couple minutes after the webinar, please take a moment to fill out the survey that we've prepared. Your feedback is incredibly important to us, and it ensures that we're continually providing value. Uh, I'd like to thank Marty for joining us today. And everyone, have a great day and stay safe out there. All right, thanks for having me.